Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're going to show you how to uh, service the rear brakes on this 2000 uh, Mercury Grand Marquis, same as any Grand Marquis or uh, Ford Crown Victoria, uh, basically the same for 1998 up to through 2011. Uh, this vehicle does have the disc brakes. Tools you'll need are jack and jack stands, um, your tire iron or a 20 mil 21 millimeter socket with a ratchet and pipe, and I say that because you'll probably need some extra leverage to get those lug nuts loose. 10 millimeter to 12 millimeter wrenches, a uh, large hammer, and a wire brush. If you have this style wheel cover, you should have a little key in your glove compartment. You pull the uh, little center medallion off and then use the key to remove a bolt that holds the wheel cover in place. Uh, then use a screwdriver to pry off the wheel cover. If you don't have access to air tools, you'll want to start with the vehicle on the ground, loosen the lug nuts, then raise and secure the vehicle and remove the rest of the lug nuts and the wheel and tire. Okay, now you can kind of inspect the condition of your pads. Uh, and you can see that the outer pad is looking a little thin. This rotor, um, if you run the back of your finger along it, it actually feels like it's in okay shape. Probably should be turned down. You can also just replace it from one from one auto. And you look back in here, as I turn the rotor, you can see this pad is really worn down. Uh, so they do need to be replaced. And to do that, you'll remove this lower 10 millimeter bolt and this upper 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, this lower bolt's 10 millimeters. I'm going to use a wrench, put it on there like that, and then I'm going to use a little bit larger wrench, hook it on there like that for some extra leverage. And these really should come apart pretty easily. I'll fast forward here as I finish removing that bolt. And the lower one, you just kind of pull out as far as you can. It goes into the control arm. Uh, and then remove the upper one. And once you have those bolts out, just use a large screwdriver and pry uh, the caliper away. And then the inside pad just kind of pulls right out and the outside pad pries out with a screwdriver. Take the rear pad out. Okay. front pad off. Spray around the wheel studs and the center hub and spare it with some penetrating oil and let that sit for a while. Okay, to get this part, nice big hammer. Avoid hitting your uh, lugs. You just want to hit the, hit the rotor itself. and I just like to put a lug nut on just to hold things in place. So the adjusting mechanism in these brakes is the caliper itself. Okay, and right here, this is the piston. As the brakes wear down, the piston just kind of in, edges its way out of the caliper. So put, to put the new brake shoes on, you need to force that back in. So what I've done is I've put my inside um, pad back into my old inside pad back into the caliper and now I have a big C-clamp here and I'll just slowly tighten up the C-clamp and you'll see the piston go back in. And it's actually more effective if I use fast motion and then once you force the piston back in um, remove the C-clamp. New pads from Money Auto. This one with uh, this clip is the inner one. Put it right in. And then this one, I kind of have to pull. I'm just kind of wedging my fingers in there and pulling out while I push that down into place. Before you reinstall your caliper, use a wire brush okay, and clean off these slides here.
And before you put your calipers back together, make sure these slide. And as you're putting the caliper up or back in place, you'll probably have to pull these out some. Okay, but these should slide nice and easy back and forth. If, they, if you have any issues, you can pull them out, clean them up, and put them back in. Okay. Now, we're going to slide the top in first. onto this slide correctly. Tap in place if necessary. Okay, from here on out, it's just a matter of getting those 10 millimeter bolts in and tightened up. Um, to get them in, just kind of push them in and kind of move the caliper around a little bit, uh, back and forth, slide it in and out a little bit, and you'll feel the bolt kind of get down into the hole, and then you can start threading it in. Uh, when you tighten them, they should only be tightened to about 12 to 15 foot-pounds, uh, which is about, just get them about as tight as you can with a small uh, 10 millimeter wrench, and that is tight enough. Okay, remove that lug nut that you had holding stuff in place. Uh, put your wheel and tire back on. Um, start all your lug nuts. Remember to put that uh, bracket that holds the hubcap and then preliminarily tighten the lug nuts. With the car back down on the ground, uh, use a torque wrench, tighten the lugs to 100 to 120 foot pounds. Uh, use a star pattern as you tighten and then put your hubcap back in place. I generally try and get it on somewhat. Then I thread that bolt back in, tighten it up, and then go around the rest of the hubcap again and make sure it's all seated well. Okay, always make sure you put your key back in the glove compartment. And then whenever you've done work on the brakes, make sure you pump up your brakes, get the pedal nice and hard, before you road test the vehicle and then when you road test do a couple of stops actually before you road test stop from like five and ten miles an hour make sure the brakes are working properly before you road test we hope this helps you out brought to you by www.1aauto.com your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393 we're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person